Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've got to be honest I had never played more than half an hour of Max Payne 3 before the start of this week. That's not because I didn't like it, I just found myself distracted by Far Cry 3 and Dishonored, both of which came out the same year. I had an AMD A4 APU at the time and because it ran both of the aforementioned games at about 20 FPS, by the time I was done, we were already midway through 2013, and GTA 5 was all I could think about. I pretty much played that exclusively for the next few months. Eight years later, and I've come to realise that I missed out on not only a good game, but one of the most well-optimised games of all time. Like almost everyone, the last open-world Rockstar game I played before 2012 was GTA 4, a true masterpiece that ran fine on my 360, but one that I avoided on PC. This was mainly because in 2008 the only PC in the house was my mum's HP compact desktop which sported less RAM than half the kitchen appliances and had as much computing power as a pound shop calculator. Why is GTA 4 relevant to this tale? Well because unlike GTA, Max Payne 3 will probably run on almost anything. For starters, it wasn't a console to PC port, it was developed alongside the 360 and PS3 versions and designed to run well on a wide range of machines from low end to high spec. At its lowest setting, it looks like this. But at its highest, it's still quite impressive even today. Back in 2012, PC games usually took up around 15 to 20 gigs of space, but this was over 30. I couldn't quite believe the size as I clicked install on Steam earlier this week, but because of the visual enhancements that the PC version features, such as four times higher textures than the consoles, better quality audio, multi-sample anti-aliasing, and optional DirectX 11 enhancements to name a handful, the overall install size is certainly justified, and by 2021 standards it's really not that large. It's not uncommon to be able to tweak a game to run on a wide range of PCs, that's the whole idea behind graphical settings menus, but Max Payne 3 takes the term wide range, well, to the max. Sorry, I couldn't resist just one. At the lowest end of things, we have a dual-core Intel or AMD processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and an 8800 GT or AMD 3400 series card suggested, but at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got a suggested 6-core i7, 16 gigs of memory, and a 680 or 7970. Truly top-tier hardware back in the day. Remember what I said about optimization though, even Rockstar themselves said that the game will still run using the lowest tested specs. While I don't have any hardware that matches this criteria exactly, I did have a Pentium G3220 dual core CPU, HD3650 and 4 gigs of RAM to hand, though I am using Windows 10. Even so, you wouldn't think that Max Payne 3, even with a heavily reduced resolution and visuals, would run on this 2 core and 256 megabytes of VRAM setup, but the combination soldiered on maintaining a 30 FPS average even in more demanding areas where the frame rate still tends to dip a little more. Most of you watching probably have better hardware than this. A lot of you probably have better hardware than the system that's been used to play and capture the B-roll footage of the game as well. That's right, the most powerful hardware I've used today is a Core i3-2120 and a 1GB GTX 750, which in combination can run Max Payne 3 at mostly very high settings with 1080p resolution and 60fps. Again, more demanding levels will cause dips to the mid-40s, but if you've got an aging PC, or one that struggles with a lot of games, be sure to consider adding 2012's Max Payne 3 to your library. To summarise, this game will run well on a very large range of hardware. It supports DX9, 10, 10.1 and 11 features, has a wide range of graphical options and plenty of resolutions to choose from. It can go from looking fantastic even in 2021 to looking, well, still pretty acceptable even at reduced quality settings. It's a perfect example of a PC game that's been paid extra care and attention to during development and I regret not paying it more attention myself earlier on because 
I really missed out on something here, but thank you very much for watching this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of Max Payne 3, and of course, let me know how well it runs on your hardware. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.